Maud Dowley Lewis once said that she went nowhere. Born on March 7, 1901, in tiny South Ohio, Nova Scotia, Maud is said to have lived her entire life within a one-hour drive of her birthplace. It wasn't a hindrance. Her mother taught her how to paint, beginning with Christmas cards they would sell to neighbors. It said her father owned both a piano and a phonograph, luxuries for the time. Maud was said to be a happy child who developed a love for art and music, encouraged by her parents. She grew up surrounded by the scenic rural Nova Scotia landscapes, with the cows and oxen and the cats, all the things that would later become her most cherished subjects. After her parents died, Maud found her way to the doorstep of the tiny home of Everett Lewis to answer his ad for a housekeeper. The two would eventually marry in the late 1930s. A poor fish peddler, Everett saw the value in Maud's work. He brought her the cardboard and drywall remnants that became her canvases and the leftover house and boat paint that was her media. Maud would become the sole supporter of the couple, selling her paintings to people who would drive up to her front yard and ask to see something. And on the short road trips she and Everett would take, she'd sell her paintings for just a few dollars. Despite living her entire life with birth defects that left her fingers painfully deformed, her shoulders hunched, and her chin pressed into her chest, and eventually developing painful rheumatoid arthritis. Maud found beauty everywhere. She did not confine her creativity to cardboard and drywall. She painted on clamshells and her dustpan. The tiny house she shared with Everett, with no electricity, no running water, no central heat, became her larger canvas. Every inch became covered with her bright, simple, joyous images. The walls, the stair risers, even the stove. While known by the locals, Maud painted in a relative obscurity for many years, until a 1965 Toronto Star Weekly photo essay by photojournalist Bob Brooks, and later that year, a CBC TV telescope documentary brought her work to a far wider audience. Now in her mid-60s, her work was finally receiving the recognition it deserved. Instead of selling her latest work for a few dollars to anyone who dropped by her home, she got commissions from faraway places Maud would never see. Maud would become known as Canada's most beloved folk artist. Her work soon hung on the walls of prestigious galleries she would never visit. Her home itself is a museum piece. Maud Lewis, who never traveled more than an hour beyond her birthplace, gave us the world as she saw it. One filled with color and magic. The world of Maud Lewis. Maud Lewis.